Last week on Freddy Printed Soup, we made some cargo containers, and I wondered, hey, I'm sure if there's a vehicle I can use to haul these cargo containers around like some kind of cargo hauler. So hey, that gave me an idea, and I made one. That's right after this. Hello fellow makers and welcome back to 3D Printed Soup! Now recently I have been playing a lot of Necromunda. It's a skirmish game set in the 41st millennium in the world of Warhammer 40,000. There's also Kill Team and a few other skirmish games out there as well in the same universe. And they've recently released a load of stuff called Ash Wastes, which is basically a sort of a Mad Max outside of the domes you usually fight in, in big nasty deserts and wasteland places where you're basically picking the wasteland apart to try and find what you can scavenge and use to survive and also finding off other scavengers and basically murdering the indigenous tribes as well. Yay, so far so grimdark. But they've released a really really cool looking thing called a ridge hauler and yes I've ordered one and I'm really looking forward to it arriving. However I thought you know what I want three or four of these things but I don't want them all to look the same so can I use 3D printing to make a couple of proxies myself and make them look really cool and get them to fit in with the same aesthetic but not look exactly the same? Of course I can and thanks to my friends at Digital Taxidermy, uh, they sent me a few construction vehicles about a year back and I did a really good video on them, link there. And yeah, I really enjoyed making these things, I thought can I print them out three times the size and use them as a sort of land train? And it turns out, yes, yes you can. So this week I am going to be using something to haul around the cargo containers I printed off last week. This isn't one of the ones I'm using, this is one of the spare ones. I've got some more futuristic ones I printed out, but I've used them for the land train so I can't show them here. Stay to the end to see how this thing turns out. And it turns out lovely. Before we do that however, thanks to everyone who's liked and subscribed again. We are rocketing towards 2000. It's incredible how generous you guys are and how much you're prepared to basically watch and basically put up with my 3D printing shenanigans. And for that, I love you. If you haven't basically subscribed, now's the best time. Drag your cursor down. Click on the subscribe button. Welcome to the wilderness, which is 3D printed soup. Prepare to be skinned alive and have all your worldly goods taken. Stay happy, stay safe. Now, let's uh, go ahead and print ourselves a really cool looking cargo hauler for hauling cargo across ridges and stuff. Let's give this a try. Okay, with the base layer applied, I now remove some of the paint with my nail. I painted some of the edges with toothpaste so I can get a nice chipping effect on here. See my last video, um, link above on how you do this. With that done, just gonna paint in the windows. I thought I'd do my nice sort of uh, black color because uh, if you're out in the sun and out in the desert where this thing's gonna be working, you're gonna want nicely tinted windows to keep the heat of the drivers. Um, I was tempted to do it silver, but silver, um, would require a lot of sanding to get it to look even slightly mirrored. So I thought, you know what, black's nice and it covers a multitude of sins. With that done, let's remove some of the uh, support material from the guns, which I printed off earlier, to attach to this thing and keep it secure. When you're doing this, remember the cutters are sharp, so watch those fingers. Uh, you don't want to be having any nasty accidents with these things. They are sharp and they are pointy. Bit of super glue in the corners and I'll attach the top of the cab to the base of the vehicle. With that done, I'm going to basically attach the wheels to this. I've also spray painted the wheels in a sort of a, a gloss matte colour. The back trailer, however, I didn't spray paint, so I'm going to paint this by hand with gloss. I'm going to be covering this with mud and uh, effects anyway, so it won't matter. Then, a bit of super glue on the guns and attach these to the trailers. And I think I'll stick a gun on the top of the cab as well for safety. 
Okay, a couple of the boxes I 3D printed in my last video to attach to the back here. And I'll put, I'll put a gun on there as well because, hey, why not put guns on everything? Now, texture paint. This stuff is uh, Avrax Mud, I think it's called, um, made by um, Citadel Color. It's basically sand in paint and it makes a lovely muddy effect on here. Cake it on as best you can. If you think you've done a bit too much, then uh, just wipe it off with a cloth. Basically, you're making it look like this thing has driven through about 12 miles of bad roads. So, yeah, get lots and lots of mud on there and you can texture it later. You can shade it later and you can sand it if you need to. And I'll get this across all six wheels and on the hubcaps because you want this thing to look like it has been driving around for a long, long time. Nothing in the 40th, on the 41st millennium looks clean. Talking about that. Let's paint some Madrax Earth shade all over this thing and get it lovely and grimy and dirty. That lovely oily feel to it. All the way around the silver bits and it will just cling into all the little crevices and nooks and crannies, make it look dirty and oily. But try not to get it too much on the bits you've chipped off because you want that chipping effect as well. With that done, let's attach the, uh, let's attack the uh, trailer with uh, some shade as well. I've also painted the uh, Lads on the side of this silver as well, using some lead belcher to give it a nice silver effect and make them stand out. Then we're going to do some black Templar, which is a contrast paint over the top of the guns, so we can paint the uh, the shrouding on those and get those to stand out, and make them look a bit grungy as well. There we go. Finish this off, and that is the guns all nicely painted up and done. Next, we'll put some white on the uh, spotlights on the front. White's going to be an undercoat because I sprayed this with uh, green and I don't think yellow is going to go very well over green. With that done, we're going to do a dark yellow undercoat and paint all the little lenses on here. I've already done the edges in silver, so uh, they should stand out quite nicely. There we go. And with the yellow done, we're then going to go over it lightly with a slightly lighter yellow, just so that it uh, stands out lovely. So yeah, these things turned out absolutely incredibly. I mean, they're big, they're chunky, they're grungy. And yeah, with the paint job, with all the uh, mud on the tyres and the, the oil and the grime all over them, they look like they have been driving hundreds of miles across a dingy, irradiated, toxin-filled wasteland. And yeah, this is all set to be raided by some group of local nomads who basically are going to tear this thing apart and steal everything inside it. And... I'm looking forward to doing train jobs with these. I'm looking forward to basically having raiders attack them and trying to defend them or attack them while they're being defended. There is just no end to the amount of fun I'm going to have playing with these on skirmish games like Necromunda or Kill Team or any one of the one page, any one of the one page rule games sets or even Gaslands. I think this would be great for Gaslands. But yeah, these are great. Mad Max aesthetic, huge wheels, lots of mud, lots of grime and lots of oil. I might even put some squats on these, which are basically space dwarfs in the 41st millennium. So yeah, I can imagine space, space dwarfs basically riding along with these things, drinking heavily and shooting at people as they go past. Yeah, absolutely incredible. Could also look like it's at home in the Mandalorian. But yeah, very, very cool these things and I'm very happy with them. Thanks to everyone who's provided the 3D fast everyone from uh, Digital Taxidermy to the other guys who provided these. I put links in the description all down below. If you do print these and make them, please leave them a thank you, um, a review and a photo to show that basically you've used their files. They put the working, so can you. So yeah, absolutely incredible.
I know I printed them, I painted them and printed them myself, but yeah, I'm very, very chuffed with these. I'm just going to keep waxing lyrical about how happy I am with these big, chunky things. And I like the way the wheels all turn because uh, the digital taxidermy files um, come with sort of built in. Uh, built in turning mechanisms that basically just print straight off the base. You have to clip anything into them, they just print like this, which is absolutely incredible. I do love print and play stuff. Anywho, I could go on about this all night, so I'm going to leave these for now. Thank you so much for watching 3D Printed Soup. You guys are absolutely fantastic. It's so great having a 3D printed community that supports me like what you guys do. And yeah, loads and loads of love to you. And if you want to say anything about this or make any suggestions, please leave um, comments in the description below. Or if you just want to basically correct my spelling, which a lot of people have been doing recently. Thanks very much. I don't leave spelling mistakes in there for you guys to complain about. So I get more and more, <laughs> more and more comments, honestly. But yeah, thank you very much. Stay happy, stay safe. Keep trucking.